bitter out there is 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 the only word for it black ice freezing fog you definitely know you're becoming an old person when you start thinking i don't know if i'll go out down to the shop now because the paths are slippy and i was thinking god if i had a fall now that that could be the beginning of the end of me if i broke something so um yeah that that was uh that was definitely a, an, an eye opener for me so look let's before we go any further let's check in a bit on the weather and the airport and first uh michelle dillon weather forecaster at met Aaron is on the line. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Brendan. How are you doing? G- good, thanks. So, so Michelle, um, wh- what were the conditions like overnight around the country and this morning? Well, we had very cold temperatures uh, across the country and um, temperatures we got down to minus 6.2 or mi- minus 6.2 in um was it in? I'll just double check that there now for you. Um, it was really cold. Um, we got down to minus 6.4 actually in Moore Park in County Cork. And um, so very cold and minus 6.3 in Athen Rye. So really cold across the country. Um, widespread frost and ice. And then we had pockets of freezing fog too. And then we had some of those wintry showers, um, especially in the north and some showers down along the west coast too. So a variety of wintry hazards out there, Brendan, um, between the frost, ice and some showers. And of course, where the showers are, we have more problem with the ice, as we have seen there um, in, in, in Dublin, especially, you know, yesterday in the morning and that's lingering yeah. into today too. You see, this is it. It's still like, I can only speak for Dublin now, but where they haven't, um, where they haven't gritted, the side roads and the footpaths, depending on which side of the road they're on, are still frozen in Dublin this morning. So is this going to become a cumulative thing now? Or do, is there going to be a thaw at some stage to clear that? Or are we going to have another layer potentially over that? Yeah, well, basically, we're in this really cold Arctic air mass now, Brendan, and the, the weather is going to stay bitterly cold, really, for the, the, another week, and um, the cold weather staying with us. And depending on the wind direction, we'll get more wintry showers coming in. So into, actually, the Dublin area, we'll probably see more showers, or we will see more wintry showers as the winds swing around a little bit more. They're coming off the Irish Sea, and um, tonight into tomorrow, we can see some further wintry showers feeding into to eastern coastal parts again. So really a cumulative effect um, throughout the week where we have those showers. I mean, the temperatures by day hardly getting above freezing in places. So it really doesn't have a chance to thaw at all. And um, so so shower, wintry showers, especially for coastal margins then, and depending on where our coastal counties and depending on the wind direction where, it, it, where we'll have them. So today, some showers in the north and the west. And as I said, then into tonight, some feeding into the east. And we'll see more of those showers in the east as well into the early days of next week. But it has to be said, overall, a lot of dry, bright weather across the country too. Um, but again, then we have the freezing fog, another complication, and I expect that to become quite widespread, especially there, you know, into Monday. But tonight, and that'll be during the day as well, tomorrow. will it, Michelle? Will the freezing well, fog during so. the day as well? Yeah. Yes, we have some pockets of freezing fog out there at the moment and we had freezing fog in Dublin Airport and still being reported and it's a temperature of minus one degrees there at the airport and at Shannon Airport yesterday freezing fog lingered all day so really um, in these conditions with very slack winds and once we have that freezing fog set in it's, it's, it's hard for it to shift but there's a fair deal of dry, bright weather out there across the country, um, but I do expect freezing fogs to become more of a problem over the next couple of days. OK, it sounds like, times. Michelle, it sounds like you're saying this could get worse before it gets better. Yeah, so we've another week, Brendan, so it's really, uh, and getting very cold, even temperatures lower by night. So as I said, we had that low temperature below minus six last night in a couple of places, and um, possibly even lower tonight and into tomorrow night when our model's showing up minus 10. So really um, very Whoa. cold and okay. lasting throughout the week. Um, so the ice, a problem, freezing fog, a problem, and and the showers causing more of a problem for the ice where they do occur and some you know snow showers as well. Um, um, so, you know, some possibly into the east through tonight, into tomorrow and then into the northwest. So the north and the east, um, especially for the, the showers of sleet and snow and everywhere then very cold. Temperatures by day hardly getting above freezing if, you know, they might even stay below freezing in some places so that ice lingering. Michelle, people are going to blame you for that now because you, you <laughs> now become the public face of that grim news for the next week. Michelle Dillon from Met Aaron, thank you very much for that cheery start to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle.
Uh, no, and as you heard there in the news as well, more flights cancelled in Dublin Airport today. So let's check in with travel journalist uh, Owen Corrie, who's on the line. Good morning, Owen. Good morning, Brendan. So I, will we start with yesterday? What happened yesterday? Uh, pretty bad yesterday. Um, 74 in inbound, uh, 74 outbound and 69 inbound flights all cancelled. Um, the problem was the first wave didn't get away. Um, the de-icers that were called into action, you got to remember it's three years since Dublin Airport had to deal with anything like this, uh, dealing with the numbers that they did. And uh, it took a little bit of a while to crank into action. They were cranked up at about 4 a.m., but it it was quite clear by about eight things were not going as planned. We had um, a decision then around seven o'clock last night to cancel a lot of the inbound flights as well as the inbound outbound flights that have been lost. So a lot of passengers affected, Brendan, it could be about 20,000 passengers affected by yesterday's cancellations and long delays. And what's happening today then, Owen? We have 23 outbound and 27 inbound cancelled. Most of them were cancelled, as I say, 7 p.m. last night. One thing to watch, Brendan, is that sometimes the information that's on the departures board and on the uh, airport app and on some of the third party apps doesn't correspond with the airline information. We had that with an East Midlands flight, which took off this morning, which was showing up cancelled uh, on some of the third party apps. Uh, stay close to your airline. They're the ones who will tell you what's happening. Um, but it, you know, you can track the progress, Brendan. The delays have come back. We had a couple of two-hour delays this morning. Um, we have three North Pole flights, for example, and one of those was two, delayed by two hours. But delays are back to about one hour now. Uh, of those flights that are delayed, some taking off on time. We've lost one of our transatlantics to Washington, and uh, you, Michelle, was mentioning uh, Shannon Airport uh, delays of about an hour there with the freezing fog, but everything functioning there and how can what's the best way for people to track it on has to be with your airline. There's a lot of uh, short uh, notice decisions being made. Um, the real, the, the airlines have your uh, text number and your email and that's where the information is going to come from. If you're relying on uh, third party apps, uh, there has been a bit of a contradiction okay. there okay. and it did cause quite a bit of confusion, Brendan. And listen, if this is going to go on, as we were just hear- hearing from Michelle there, if this is going to go on for a week are they going to get more adept at dealing with it or could this start bleeding into the big Christmas travel then as the week goes on yeah, you're right, uh, Brendan. It's not the busiest time of the year. It's actually um, qu- quiet enough time um, in normal for normal travel times. The big rush starts coming in in a little while. The, the problem always comes, and we saw it with the security queues during the summer, very similar. If things go wrong early in the morning, you never catch up. That's what happened yesterday. What we saw today is, admittedly, they had reduced the capacity because they had estimated how much de- de-icing they'd have to do so they are getting on top of it. I would expect this to be, um, you know, they would. I do expect them to cope as the two or three or four days go on. What we what we see though is a, a little bit of disruption. Aircraft not in the airports that they're supposed to be, and passengers certainly not where they're supposed to be. So all of those have to be from yesterday have to be um, accommodated. And the uh, air, the aviation industry is fairly good at this. They deal with weather events uh, all the time. Not so much in Dublin because we're not as north as some of the other airports. Yeah. But we have airport clo- They they deal with airport closures. A big international airline like Ryanair operates in 27 countries. It's used to airport clo- uh, airports being hit by weather events. Okay, so hopefully this writes itself. Okay, travel journalist Owen Carey, thank you very much.